Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so this is in collaboration with the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco, and it's powered by the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation, along with the Los Angeles Regional Consortium. So thank you so much for joining. So I, uh, we are the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation, and I make up a team of four. So within that, we have Jermaine Hampton, who's the Vice President of Workplace Workforce Development Special Projects, along with Jose Palayo, who's the Program Manager. Uh, my name is Alicia Dean. I'm, also, I'm an Assistant Program Manager within Workforce Development, and Jared Lopez is also on here, who is also Assistant Program Manager within Workforce Development. So this is in collaboration with the Los Angeles Regional um, Consortium. And these type of info sessions that we have are bought through our partnership with them. So the Los Angeles Regional Consortium is made up of the 19 community colleges within the LA region area. Um, we provide not only these sessions like these, but also career awareness workshops, webinars, and learning opportunities. And we also host regional program advisories for faculty and deans within the Los Angeles Regional area. So if you're interested in learning more about the work that we do, you can visit the website on your screen. The, court, the recording here will also be provided and posted on our website, so, if you have, so you can have access to it as well. At the end of the presentation, we will have a feedback poll, so it'd be really great if people can do it. It's just three simple questions and get to it towards the end. So next we have Angel, who is the Talent Acquisition Specialist for the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco here. So I'll leave it to Angel to um, get it started. Yeah, thanks, Alicia. And uh, thank you to LADC and everyone that's here in the meeting as well. So we're very appreciative of your time. Um, I'm Angel or Angel Medrano. I'm a Talent Acquisition Specialist for the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. Um, I've been here for about three and a half years, I want to say and mainly supporting um, the positions I will present to you today. So I may, I'm the main recruiter for safety and operations with the Federal Reserve Bank. And what they are is mostly um, our essential frontline workers. So what I plan to do in this presentation is um, be as detailed as I can, you know, kind of explaining um, more about the safety and operations opportunities that we have going on. Um, you don't really think about it too much, I wanna say when you think about the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, so my hope is that you know we're able to talk about it, give you more about their mission statement, what it is that they do, the opportunities that we have. And then at the end of it, um, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to help answer that for you. So, oh. awesome. You can go to the next slide. Perfect, so the Federal Reserve System, um, as many of you all know, it's a, more of a historical type of organization created hundreds of years ago to help centralize banks. Um, for us here, we are the there's 12 different Federal Reserve Systems across the US, this one being the 12th and the last one. So that's where you see the name the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. Um, we do have six different locations at the Fed. Uh, the 12th district is the SF Fed. So SF is more of the headquarters, I would say. So that's where I'm located here in the Bay Area. So this is more of our headquarter branch. Um, but the opportunity I'll present to you today, you know, it's in Los Angeles. So we have our Los Angeles downtown LA branch there. Um, we also have a location in Phoenix, Arizona, Salt Lake City, Seattle, Washington, and Portland, Oregon. So a total of six different branches make up our 12th district, the SF Fed. Um, our mission, the Central Bank of the U.S., is to provide the nation with a safe, flexible, with stable monetary and financial system. So something quick there. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. <clears throat> Perfect. So the first thing I want to talk about is really our uh, cash operations. So what is it that we do? Um, for us here, you know, we don't create the currency in the coin. The U.S. Mint does that. Um, I wish we could, you know, put some more money in my pocket, but that's okay. Uh, so if you can go to the next slide, I can talk about a little bit about the mission statement that they do, and then we'll talk about the functional areas. Um, so cash operations, what do they do? So they're an on-site essential business. They're located in all five except for Portland, Oregon. Uh, Portland's a very tiny, tiny branch. I think they have like 10 employees there. So we don't have a cash operations there. 
But um, each of the other ones, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Seattle, Salt Lake City, and Phoenix, they all have their uh, cash operations. And they're more in the basement level of the Fed, if you will. So we have like the ground where we have, you know, the the essential, uh, all of our on-site workers that are in there, the hybrid teams. Uh, so in the bottom of the, the building is where we have the cash operations. Um, so their mission statement is that they are trusted to provide the coin and currency reliably and securely to our communities. They're service driven, seeking to meet the unique needs for each of our employees while simultaneously fulfilling our mission of providing the currency and coin to all of our communities during times of stability and times of high uh, volatility. So they're thought leaders committed to innovation and integration of new technologies as they partner with their stakeholders and address uh, contingencies and fulfill the mission to the public at all times. They are committed to creating an inclusive work environment that places people first while maintaining the integrity of the US payment system. So the next slide, um, I'll talk about the functional areas that we have in, in cash. So most of these, uh, or two of these right now that I'll talk about are shipping and receiving and um, high speed. Um, finally, I'll talk about like the cash administration side there is to it. So um, you wanna go to the next slide too. Awesome. So shipping and receiving, that's basically, you know, the title of it. We have um, custodians or what we call cash handlers. They're primarily responsible for receiving deposits from DIs and filling the orders with currency and coin. So I like to, when I explain this over the phone, when I'm talking to candidates, I really explain it kind of being like the Amazon warehouse of the Fed or kind of like the FedEx of the Fed. So this, this environment is more of a warehouse type of environment. And instead of you know filling packages that you and I order through Amazon or uh, having it through FedEx, you know they're they're putting the orders of currency and coin, so they'll be working with that and working in the vaults as well. Um, and as it explains in the second uh, power uh, bullet point, is that they put the currency in containers by denomination, they store them in the vaults, pending the verification of the other side, which I'll talk about. It's called high speed. Um, they weigh the bags of coins, they store them in the vaults on coin skins, uh, skids, and in order to maintain sufficient inventories, uh, they usually order new coins from the U.S. Mint on a regular basis. So that's shipping and receiving. They have more, um, I want to say, communication with, if you've ever seen the armored trucks go around like downtown, um, or if you've ever seen them, they're, they're probably coming from the Fed, or they're going to the Federal Reserve. Uh, to pick up those deposits. And what they do is they take them to wherever it needs to go. It could be to different small businesses, uh, different banks, uh, ATMs. And at the end of the day, that's money that you and I take out to help put gas in the car, put food on the table, uh, put you know everything here that we need for, for cash. So uh, next slide. The other side of it is called high speed. Um, and what they do is that they work with these uh, currency processing systems. So there's these big old machines that have sophisticated sensors. So they make a decision about each note's um, authenticity and its quality. So anything that's of high soil level um, or if it's in poor physical condition, then they take out a circulation, they shred it. Anything that's uh, counterfeit, then they send it to the secret service and the remaining notes that are good to go and they're packaged and they go to the other side, uh, which is the shipping and receiving side. So there's two functional areas. They work with different uh, schedules, specifically in Los Angeles. So shipping and receiving is more of a five days a week, eight hour days. They have different shifts. It could be day, day shift, a swing shift, or a graveyard. Um, high speed, the one we're talking about right now, it runs on uh, 410, so four days a week. 10 hour shifts and it could be from Monday to Thursday um, and it can also be from Tuesday to Saturday. So most folks like, you know, it depends on what you, what would work out for your work life balance. Um, but with this high speed uh, position, it's really helpful for folks that are currently in college. So they can take that extra day, the fifth day to take any classes or if they need to study, then they use that extra day. Um, if you go to the next slide. 
Last but not least, we have our cash admin uh, team. So they help support both shipping and receiving in high speed by performing independent verification of bank records generated by those areas. Um, they facilitate communication to the bank's customers and prepare statistical reports, manage the administration of standard cash automation and settle the entire cash department's financial accounts each day. So they're uh, split into different positions, which is uh, either a business analyst or an operations support specialist. We also have coordinators. So they're the, more of the, the administrative side of cash and we have opportunities that do um, pop up as well as the, the cash counter positions. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, that's um, that's basically a quick overview of district uh, cash operations. Um, what I wanna talk about now is district facilities and what is it that they do? So their mission is to support the goals and objectives of the Federal Reserve Bank by developing, enhancing, and preserving the physical assets of our locations in LA, Phoenix, Portland, Salt Lake City, San Francisco, and Seattle. Um, with the next slide, we'll talk about these two opportunities that we currently have in Los Angeles. So one of them is an engineering position, which is, uh, you'll find sometimes they're more of a maintenance uh, technician or an HVAC, someone that has HVAC experience, they're looking for those type of folks or someone that's worked in the hotel um, doing, um, doing that type of work, or let's say at a hospital, then that's the people that they they love to to speak about uh, speak to about these positions. Um, for engineering, they uh, work behind the scenes, so they help maintain the bank's critical operating equipment and systems. Um, they perform services and general repairs, which include temperature control, water leaks, power outages, any plumbing repairs, door and lock repairs, lighting requests. So some of the the um, repairs here are listed. Meanwhile, we have uh, construction project managers. So the construction team is responsible for improving and creating innovative office space environments through effective management of the design and construction activities on our branches. Um, some of the responsibilities I listed here are to develop and communicate scope of work to a diverse audience made up of end users, partners, and vendors. They assist uh, the development and management of project budget and change requests. The managers also work with procurement department in the selection and engagement of uh, professional consultants and contractors. Um, they include preparation of all bid instructions. They host the bid walks, respond, respond to bidder questions, and conduct uh, bid analysis and evaluations. They inspect and evaluate construction progress to ensure project complies with the approved project plans and specifications. And finally, they oversee all financial aspects of a project, including budget, a contract, invoice, and change orders. Um, so that's two of the uh, opportunities that we currently have when it comes to district facilities. For the most part, um, these are the only positions I really see um, in Los Angeles are for a facilities engineer or a construction project manager for, for this department. So the last one uh, that I've worked with as well is our, our law enforcement team at the Federal Reserve Bank. And uh, their mission here is, if you go there, yeah, I go, is to provide a safe and secure environment for its employees and tenants while safeguarding the Federal Reserve Bank facilities, operations, and assets. And what does it mean to be a Federal Reserve uh, police officer? So you would serve as the face of the SF Fed, both as the frontline defenders of our five locations and ambassadors in the communities that we serve. Um, our law enforcement team is made up of police officers. We have analysts, security technologists, and training specialists. So no matter what skills you bring to the table, there's really a place for you here um, with law enforcement. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or just starting your career in law enforcement, there are very much exciting opportunities for you to, to join the team here. Um, every police officer are considered federal law enforcement and are expected to uphold that responsibility accordingly. It means being open to taking on leadership roles and new assignments. Um, we have canine officers and EMTs, uh, specialty assignments like executive protection, and our field training officers. 
Um, some of the things I wanted to mention here are um, the benefits of working for the Federal Reserve in general. Um, so we have a lot of exciting projects that are coming up. There's a lot of internal mobility and opportunities. Um, I would say I'd spend most of, uh, half of my time is talking to external candidates and the other half is talking to internal employees and helping them move, let's say, from one location to the other. So we have a lot of, let's say, folks in um, Los Angeles that have family in Phoenix and they might find an opportunity that makes it easy for them to continue receiving benefits, continue working for the Fed and continue growing from within. Um, other opportunities are promotions going up the ladder, you know, let's say from a cash handler to a cash supervisor. So we see a lot of opportunities like that. Um, we have folks that might start off in cash and they might find a, an excitement or a love to, to join the police services. So we'll have folks that would join uh, starting cash, they join police services, or they find cash handler opportunities as a good step, a uh, good foot into the door uh, to work for the Federal Reserve Bank or in the financial industry. And uh, based on your background or what degrees you have, let's say like you're going for an accounting degree and you start off in cash, you finish your, your degree, there's opportunities where we have uh, folks that move up to be an accountant at the Federal Reserve Bank. So most of the opportunities we have here, um, we're not you know, in it for profit. We don't have anything to sell. So it's more of that mission to help support the American public. With that being said, um, the culture here is very people first and management is more of a coaching type of culture, kind of meeting with you, seeing how things are going and where is it that you wanna go? You know, How can they help support you and give you the tools that are needed to help you succeed? Um, so that's where, you know, it's very um, encouraging to hear that and for them to really let you be the driver of where you want to go career wise. Um, for me, being here at the Fed, I've helped a lot of folks, you know, starting cash and be a business analyst, as I mentioned, you know, be an accountant, um, go into police services, a facilities person, go into CAS, go into police services, go into our supervision and credit. We have an audit team. So we see cash as being really one of them, you know, for cash is kind of the foundation that can lead you to different groups um, across the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, we have a variety of training programs, mentorship and support, um, subscriptions to popular e-learning resources. Um, the benefits, I think a lot of folks love working at the Fed because of the benefits that it does provide. So we do have a student loan repayment program. So monthly employer contribution to outstanding student loans up to 9,000. Um, a continuing educational reimbursement program. So reimbursement for certific certificate, bachelor's and graduate coursework up to 15,000 per year, depending on your course coursework. Um, a lot of folks have asked me too, like what is the, the dress code? You know, how are you supposed to dress when you're at the Fed? Uh, so we don't have one. Um, it's more of what we call a dress for your day. So whatever you feel comfortable wearing, depending on the occasion, if you have a meeting, of course, you know, dressing something more professional to that. Um, but most of the folks you see in, in cash operations, they, they um, have jeans on, sweaters, if it gets too cold, uh, shirts, we just ask that it's all closed toe, you know, uh, jeans aren't too baggy or anything like that. But uh, it's more more dress for your day. Um, with police officers, they have their, their uniforms they do wear. Um, we have what's also called flex for your day and flex for your life. So flexible work hours and work arrangements. So they're very, very big here at the Fed um, about a good work-life balance, which is the next bullet point here. Um, we have different employee resource groups that you can be a part of. So we see a lot of involvement um, from these departments as well. You know, we have what we call, uh, for example, Latinos in finance. So if you're looking to join this employee resource groups, they do a lot of events across the year. They do different, uh, they plan different uh, things to do, such as giving back to the community, going to schools, uh, giving backpacks away, going to classes to read. So there's a lot of different ERG groups that we have here too. Um, we have great health, vision, dental benefits and a 401k and pension. So the 401k goes up to 6% of employee contributions plus 1% employee contribution. Um, and with the pension, it's old school. You don't really hear about it too much. So you do have to be here for five years um, to get the full amount. And here are um, kind of a more up-to-date list of what we currently do have at the Federal Reserve Bank. So if you do go to our opportunities page um, in cash operations in LA, um, we have a cash counter position, which is um, what we offer 
where folks can start off as a term. So you all are uh, fully employed, you're fully benefited by the Federal Reserve Bank, your Fed employee with a term. It's more of a one year opportunity to join us at the Fed. And you can also see, you know, uh, if, if it is something for you as well. Um, and if you're doing great, you know, attendance and performance is there, then you do have that opportunity within that year to become a permanent employee of the Fed. So there are different ways, you know, that really works out. It depends on um, if there is any budget to increase, increase headcount. We have folks that also retire, you know, here in cash specifically in LA, we have a lot of employees that have been here for 20 years, 30 years. We have folks for 40 years. Um, so they have spent a lot of time in cash and um, usually, you know, we backfill those type of positions um, or, you know, folks go to different groups at the Federal Reserve, they get promoted um, or they leave for another opportunity. So that opens up um, a chance for you to become permanent. And uh, they also have that opportunity to extend if needed, you know, if you are doing great, um, they do not want to let you go and they want to invest time in you. Um, so that's currently what we have, a cash handler opportunity term for our uh, high speed team. So that's that four day, 10 hour a week schedule. Um, we do have a supervisor of cash opportunity as well. So that's someone who's a leader, you know, uh, they are looking for at least um, one year of experience in leading teams, three years of related experience. So if you've worked in banking is great, but um, it's not um, necessary, you know, you work in banking. So if you have any warehouse you've worked in a warehouse type of environment in manufacturing um and cosmetics and um restaurants you know those are the type of folks that they would love to speak with um and that goes for the cash calendar opportunities too so banking experience is not required we've had folks that are coming from starbucks from whole foods target um we have folks that have been you know working at the schools kind of interning or They've helped out, you know, worked in the campus. And we've found these folks to be very, very successful, you know, in these type of positions. Um, we do have an operations support specialist and the business analyst position that are on the cash admin side. Um, this should be coming up pretty soon here. Um, district facilities, as I mentioned before, we have a facilities engineer position and a construction project manager role. Um, and law enforcement, we have a police officer rec. Uh, so that position got posted last night, actually. So they just opened this one and they're looking for a sergeant too. So we do have opportunities currently at the moment. We do expect some more to open up, but as of now, um, this is the most up to date. And the application process in a work day. So if you do decide to apply to any um, of these opportunities. I use the cash handler one, for example. Um, you can go ahead and uh, the first thing that it'll ask you is, you know, how did you hear about us? So if you go there, um, you can go ahead and click on professional association and then it'll have like a drop down list. And if you go all the way, it's, it's alphabetical. You go down to the L, it'll, it'll show up um, Los Angeles Economic Development Corporation, LA EDC. So if you can go ahead and select that for us, we definitely appreciate it and helps us, you know, see that you have applied, you know, after after being in this call. Perfect. And then, um, yeah, that's that's what I've got for you. So I'll open up the floor now for for any questions that you may have. Great. Thank you, Angel. Um, yeah. So if anyone has any questions, please raise your hand and we can unmute you. Um, be anything about any of the positions uh, Angel walked through or about. Uh, the company itself. So feel free if anyone has any questions to either raise your hand or you can put them in the chat and we'll ask for you. Uh, someone asked, can you please share a link to the careers page? Yeah, I'm about to to put it right now. So I'll, I'll put the, free, uh, the careers page and also the benefits page so that you can have it here. Cool. So then we have a question from uh, Leone. She's asking what types of opportunities are available for older workers? Yeah, so it really depends on the experience that you bring really. Um, so this is just an example of safety and operations. Um, if you, let's say you've had any leadership experience then you would be a great fit. You know, I would invite you to apply to any of our supervisor positions or more of a management level. Um, it really depends on the, the type of experience you have. And it's, these are just a small amount of 
uh, positions that we we do have. You know, we do have recruiters on the other team here um, that work with, let's say, our accounting, our supervision and credit group, audit. Um, so it depends on the type of experience you have. If you would love to, you know, send over your resume, then I'm more than happy, you know, to help you out. I'll type in my email here. So if you want to connect with me, you can put on um, the title of it, you know, just LAEDC. So that way I can, um, it helps me, you know, see who's reaching out, you know, if it's from LAEDC or any other external candidates, then I'd be more than happy to help you out. Great. Uh, thank you for the question, Leone. Uh, we have another question from Armine. She's asking, uh, what are the pay range for these positions? Yeah, so the pay range um, really depends on the type of position you're looking at. You know, I would say the least amount that we're looking at here, if I go into, they're all posted on on the um, on the position. So you'll be able to sign, find it at the bottom where it has a minimum, the mid and the max. So it really depends on the experience that you do bring um, coming to the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, but I want to say the least amount is around like 55, 60,000. That's for a cash counter opportunity. So it really depends on the position you're applying for um, on top of the experience that you would bring, you know, coming to the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, do keep in mind as well that, you know, we do have some great benefits packages that come with uh, coming to the Fed. So you're looking at um, uh, vision, dental, um, and medical that are effective on day one. So the moment you clock in here, you're already covered, um, which is great. So you can also you get vacations as well. You get 15 days of vacation on your first day too, and uh, nine sick days. And, and most of these roles are could be non-exempt. So any of those that, you know, any sick days that you don't use, you get paid for at the end of the year. We have opportunities for bonuses as well at the end of the year as well. So if everything goes well, you know, your performance is uh, you're knocking out of the ballpark, then you do have opportunities to see bonus or maybe like a salary adjustment too, really depending on the pool that they have and how well you do too. Um, so there are opportunities for that. Great. Uh, any other questions for Angel? Hello. All right. well, oh. I'm sorry, I have a question. Jared. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, go ahead. Um, the remote positions that are listed on your website, there's a city listed next to remote. So does one have to be uh, living in that city, but doing the jo job remotely, or can can a person live anywhere in the states? So, if it does have this city there, um, I would I would say that they would probably want someone to be around that area. Um, most remote positions right now at the Fed, I'll tell you, um, we don't have too many, and most of the jobs here for safety and ops are like all one hundred percent on site. But any other opportunities that we do have, they're more of a hybrid type of type of system where um, you are expected to come into the office every couple of days a week. Um, so you would have to be around the area. With remote, uh, we, we don't have, you know, many opportunities now, um, but it, I would assume, you know, that they're looking for someone that could be around that area if needed, you know, if you have like a once a couple of months meeting or something. Um, but yeah, remote, we don't see too often. Sounds good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from John. I'll, I'll let you unmute and ask your question yourself. Yes. Hello. I had a couple of questions. Um, uh, first of all, what type of vetting do you um, perform of your, empl your prospective employees? And what kind of employment history do you look for? And I, I'm sorry that I know you just answered that question, but what was the pay range for like a cash handler? Yeah, so let me pull up the the cash counter position right now that we have currently, so I can give you the most up to date information. If you give me one sec, um, perfect. Sorry, it's just loading right now. All right, so the current one that we have um, is, as I mentioned, more of that four days a week, 10 hour days. Um, so that one, they have a swing shift available right now, which is kind of more of an overnight, I would say. And that's from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m., Monday evening or Friday morning. Um, with these type of positions, they do include a 10% shift differential on top of it for working that shift. 
Um, currently, what we're seeing is that the minimum would be around 2096. The midpoint is around 27, 26 an hour, and the max is about 3351. Um, looking, you know, from my experience here working at the Fed, usually where they stick around for this type of position would be around the midpoint. So you can go up or down, really depending on the type of experience that you have. These are more entry level positions. So they're kind of like, you know, if you have one plus year of related experience, um, then you can see yourself around the mid, a little bit above. But if you're, let's say you've had more, mostly like internships that you've done um, straight out of school, you know, out of college, then you can kind of see yourself a little bit below the mid, but it's usually around that midpoint. Um, but do keep in mind, you know, you do also get that 10% uh, shift differential on top of that for working that, that shift. And then the other questions you had, sorry. Oh, that's all right. Uh, I was wondering what type of vetting do you perform, you know, as far as background checks and, oh, yeah. you know, things of that nature, because I know you're, you know, working with money. I yeah, think. no, 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 no worries. <laughs> yeah, it's a great question that you bring up. Uh, so the the background checks that we do do um, for cash, I'll explain, you know, what we have for, but for cash, um, what we do is we do education verification and employment verification. So let's say, you know, where you went to school, if you have a degree, um, or if you're currently still in school, you know, your transcript, that will help us verify um, your educational. Um, employment, you know, if you did work, where you worked at, if, if it was something that you were not paid for, maybe more of an internship, then um, you can let us know as well. Um, so that's more of our educational and employment verification part. The other one we do as well is fingerprints. Um, so you would go into a location that the Fed works with to complete the fingerprints. Um, but overall, that's that's pretty much what we uh, do in terms of the background check. With law enforcement, that's more of a lengthy process. So I would say that's more uh, of about a three to four month type of uh, process if you do move forward. So one of the things that it does require is more of a personal history questionnaire that you fill out. You go to the interview. Um, if you are going through the background check process, and then you would do everything I mentioned for the cash operations position. Um, on top of that, you would have to do a fit for duty test, um, a medical and a psych. Um, so, and a background investigator will work with you as well. Um, but usually those type of positions take about three to four months or so. And then you would go into a law enforcement training, um, which could be depending on when you're onboarded, it could be before you start or during the start um, that you're with us. So. That's um, law enforcement, a lot, lot longer. If you ever come across positions that, you know, do list working in uh, supervision and credit, which we do have our department here that would hire, let's say, um, a risk specialist or anything like that, then um, they would do like a credit check as well. Or they would also see if you have any stocks, uh, for example, like in Bank of America, because that could be kind of a conflict. It would be a conflict of interest because in those type of positions, you'd be looking at information that could relate to like Wells Fargo or Bank of America. So it really, it really depends on the, the position you're looking at. Um, but do use my myself, you know, um, to reach out. I listed my email there. Um, if you do have any questions regarding that or anything else that I can help provide for you, um, I'm more than happy to do so. Okay, I had one more quick question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. The, uh, Say you do apply <laughs> you are asked for an interview uh is there what is the interview process and are there multiple interviews yeah perfect question um so the interviews are all uh done online so we use microsoft teams um, we don't have any on-site interviews at the moment at the bank so that's really for for any position that we have here there are they are moving slowly into having folks do more of an on-site but that would be like if you're a finalist, you would take like an on-site type of tour of the department. Um, so you can go ahead and see that. I can only explain it, you know, on the phone or like in the interview of what exactly this environment is like. So they're slowly moving into it this year um, because of the pandemic. You know, they had to stop everything, but they're slowly getting back into that. But for now, as of today, you know, it's all done online through Microsoft Teams. We find it a little bit easier, too, um, for the candidate and for the panel where we can find times and dates. You don't have to ask for a day off of work or anything like that. Uh, the panel can all get together, whether they're together you know, on, on site or maybe someone might be online. Um, so that's that. 
And, and then the amount, the round of interviews that we do have uh, really depend on the positions that are offered. If they're more entry level, like a cash counter position, it's more of a one, one time, one round um, interview. And then after that, they will follow back with uh, feedback. You know, if you do pass um, or if they're looking for someone else at this moment. So we'll give you that um, information. If it's in police services, then um, and it's also a one round interview. And if you're looking at construction project manager and engineering, um, you're usually seeing right now that there are two rounds of interviews that you'll meet with one panel and a second panel. Um, you'll have maybe our manager on the call or the uh, assistant vice president of district facilities might be on that call as well. Um, so it really depends on the position you're applying for. If it's a manager position or a cash supervisor position, then we do have like those two rounds of interviews too. Um, so that's what it looks like, the interview process. And uh, kind of backtracking to that, you know, once you, when you know that your resume has been viewed and you're going to the next step with these type of positions, what we do because of the high volume that we have of applicants is that we will invite you to complete what we, we call Spark Hire, which is a one-way video interview. Um, and that helps speed up the process a lot rather than uh, myself, you know, kind of reaching out to you in weeks time because right now it's just one recruiter, which is myself, helping support these three um, departments. So with Spark Hire, it's a quick one-way video interview where you can go ahead and um, answer questions as they relate to the opportunity and for us to learn more about you. Um, so usually around like eight to 10 questions or quick questions where you can present your best self, you know, let us know about you, you know, what you're looking for, if you're flexible for the days and times that are listed and it helps us view your your application, your video, as soon as we can to give you uh, feedback right away if you're moving forward uh, versus not. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, John. Uh, we have a follow-up question from, I think it's Leoniva. Uh, she says, Angel, did you say we can email you our <coughs> resume and discuss other opportunities as well? I may have misheard you. Oh yeah, so um, yes, please go ahead and email me your resume. Um, on the title, you know, of the email, go ahead and tell me that, you know, put LA EDC in the body of it. You can tell me that you're from LA EDC, um, as it helps me kind of see who's reaching out. You know, sometimes I'll be working with these positions. We'll have externals that email me. Um, so if you put LA EDC, then I'll know exactly, you know, where you're reaching out from and you can go ahead and submit your resume. Um, if you're looking for any feedback or any opportunities that we might have that you could be a good fit for then I'm more than happy to help you out. I think that's super important, you know, is, is lending a helping hand to someone here that uh, needs it. So I'm more than happy to connect with you. Um, I can respond back as soon as I can. And if we need to get on a the call, then um, we can go ahead and do so to discuss about, you know, how we can help you join, join the Federal Reserve Bank, so. Great. Uh, well, if there are no other questions, oh, oh am I here? Uh, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Jared. Um, sorry, one more question, Angel. Do you want yeah. the resume in the federal format or <laughs> private sector format? Yeah, so um, if you can do private sector, like whatever you have, you can email me. Um, if you, the format you can do totally like a PDF. So anything that you do have, or if you have it written on the email too, that can help me see, you can introduce yourself, you know, kind of a little bit of information of what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And what your question is, what you need help with, and I'm more than happy. Um, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Great. So before everyone leaves, uh, we have a quick feedback poll. Alicia, I don't know if you want to put that on the screen. You could please uh, fill that out quickly. It really helps us uh, as we're putting together these events to just know what helps, what doesn't help, and what we could do better next time. And as you're doing that, we just want to quickly share uh, an initiative that LAEDC is hosting um, called the uh, AI Innovation Challenge. So in partnership with Microsoft Philanthropy, if any of you are interested in learning about AI uh, or how you might be able to apply it to your career, this is really a good opportunity to do so. Um, it's taking a free le LinkedIn learning course uh, online. It's about four, four and a half hours. And then there's a final exam at the end. And then once you complete the exam, uh, complete the course, you can send us your certificate of completion and receive a free year of LinkedIn premium. So for those of you who are doing the job search, who are trying to network, 
Uh, LinkedIn Premium is an incredible tool. It's kind of expensive. It's like $400. So if you do want that additional assist as you guys are um, kind of networking and looking for jobs, uh, it is a great resource. And so if you have any questions, feel free to uh, email us. You can scan the QR code here that uh, will give you more information on the initiative. Um, and yeah, let us know if you have any questions and hopefully um, it is a good resource for all of you. And if that's it, if there are no other questions, thank you everyone for attending. Um, hope to see you at a, another event. And uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to email any of us. Thank you, Angel, for taking the time to join us and for sharing all these great careers. Um, hope everyone has a great rest of their day.